Hi everybody, today I have the Iowa Exos 5. They call this a wireless speaker and I'd say that's a matter of opinion. The size and shape may look familiar to some and I would say that this is a tabletop speaker despite having a six hour battery. At least they claim it's a six hour battery. Normally those measurements are taken at 50% volume and you might want to go louder than that. Controls are more like a stereo component and less like a Bluetooth speaker. For example, there are no play, pause buttons, or track control. What we have are mode select buttons down here and radio tuning buttons up here along with your power switch and your giant volume knob, which also serves as a menuing select button. All the ports for the Exos 5 are located in the rear and we have a USB-C charging port a U-Drive port, which can also be used as a power bank, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input port, and an FM radio antenna port. And we also have a little reset switch right here. I think this is supposed to be a handle, but it's not that comfortable to carry this speaker. And I think this is more of a tabletop design anyway. It doesn't have an IPX5 or 7 waterproof, dustproof rating, nothing like that. And if you want to listen to the FM radio, you have to plug in this thing, which is basically a, uh, it's probably like a four foot wire. You don't want to carry that around. You don't get any specifications, but if I had to guess, I would say we have dual two inch full range, 10 watt drivers in the front and just some base ports in the rear. When I say full range, I mostly mean mid range. You're not going to get the deep bass. You're not going to get the high frequency treble. You will get a mid range experience. However, to get the most bass out of the speaker, these bass ports actually do come in handy. Place them near a wall, in a corner, even on the floor helps. You will get the most bass you can out of the speaker, but be careful, you will get some distortion for the deep bass. You won't get distortion on the treble end just because it's just not capable of producing those frequencies. The power system is a little unusual. They give you a USB-C cord, which is fine, but on the other end is a transformer. That is the unusual part. I don't really mind this, and since this is meant to be a tabletop speaker, it's I don't have any problem that they provided you with this, but I, I just think it's kind of odd that if they're going to go with a transformer, why do we have a USB-C cord? Can you charge this with a with a standard USB-C charger? Maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I would even try. Just use the cord that they provide. One thing that you might have noticed is that there is no wired headphone jack. I can kind of understand that if your primary use is Bluetooth speaker, but since this is a tabletop radio, you might want headphones if you are listening to auxiliary input or U drive or FM radio. So it, it feels like a missing feature. I don't, it, it wouldn't have to have it and it doesn't, but it just seems like it should. However, I would like to point out that if it did have a headphone jack, don't put it back here. Like I've seen so many speakers have a headphone jack in the back of the device and it just bothers me. There is a usability flaw in my opinion, since all of the device controls are on the top, but the screen is on the front. And it's an LCD panel that doesn't have a wide viewing angle, so you really have to look straight at it to read the LCD panel, but then you have to look at the top to see what you're doing with the menuing. It's not the best design there. When it comes to the FM radio subsystem, I found the process of scanning for stations, saving presets, selecting presets to be awkward and confusing. The device only supports three presets from the top, one, two, and three. You do have more access to presets from the remote, but only for the first eight presets, and it supports up to 40. If you want to go beyond eight presets, you have to go through the menuing system to select one. As long as we are talking about the remote control, notice that on the Exos 5, we only have direct access to the Bluetooth and FM radio functions. 
if you want to use auxiliary input or the U drive, you need to go through the menuing system, or you can pick it from the buttons on the remote. One feature that I think is kind of nice is the alarm system. You can have up to five alarms, and you choose not only the time, but the days you want it to go on. Your options are a specific day, or weekdays, or weekends, and you can choose between a beep or the FM radio. The USB-A port was designed to accept standard memory sticks, like this one, or this one but not this adapter. The reason why I say that is because it is spaced very close to the USB-C charging port and the three and a half millimeter auxiliary input port. So there just isn't room to have this with those other two things in use. The memory stick supports up to 9,999 songs and your repeat modes are repeat off repeat one track or repeat all tracks. There is no shuffle play on this device. How would I use the Iowa Exos 5? I see this as a kitchen speaker, desktop speaker, something on your nightstand, maybe a table in your study, something along those lines where you're not looking for a high fidelity experience nor an ear deafening experience. This is a mid-range speaker meant to be listened at low to moderate volumes. I like that the Iowa Exos 5 has source options, Bluetooth, FM radio, auxiliary input, U-Drive. Those are all very nice. I think that the screen could use improving and the controls are kind of a mixed bag. The menuing system is a really fast timeout, so uh, be decisive when you're using that. The remote control is fine. It doesn't, I don't think it offers that many advantages other than having dedicated device buttons for each mode and five more presets than the device itself supports, uh, at least from the control panel here. So I'm going to give this a three out of five star rating. Thanks for stopping by.